and welcome back to another episode of Skypothesis, Vanilla Skyrim Character Builds. It's been an awesome season so far and we've loved sharing our builds with you all. We created this channel to serve as a digital library for all of our best builds and feel honored to have so many like-minded roleplay fans join us in this journey. This week we are excited to showcase the Wood Orc, the most powerful archer we've ever built. Per the Skyrim wiki, Wood Orcs have evolved over the eras to the point where they have more in common with the Bosmer than their distant cousins from Rosinium. They prize not only physical strength, but agility, speed, and geographical knowledge, which they equate with tactical knowledge. While most orcs are known for their up-close, berserking savagery, the wood orcs take a different approach, favoring tactical advantage over brute force on the battlefield. But that doesn't mean he lacks strength, far from it. The orc's racial ability, Berserker Rage, is incredibly powerful for archers, doubling damage output. Now we've personally never played a snake archer that takes advantage of this until now. This build is all about taking powerful long-range shots. We're excited for you all to experience this dangerous archer with us today. Like always, we have timestamps in the video so that you can navigate easily throughout the video. But before that, just a reminder to check out the links in the description for our ever-growing Discord channel, along with our merch shop where you can go if you want to further support the channel and get cool swag while you're at it. And now, without further ado, let's jump into the backstory of the Wood Orc. The forests of Valenwood are home to not only Bosmer, but to the Wood Orcs. Orcs that have diverged from their northern cousins. They do share many characteristics and a deep veneration for Malakath, but in combat they couldn't be more different. Like the elves of the forest they are, one imperial expeditionist said, they leap from tree to tree and truly are one with the forest. Our Wood Orc was raised in a time of unrest at the hands of the Thalmor. His Orc clan attempted to resist the Thalmor takeover, but failed. As the Thalmor swept through the cities and villages of the forest, the combined Bosmer rebels and Wood Orc tribes were losing ground quickly. The young Wood Orc was too young to fight, but wanted to contribute somehow. He shouldered more of the responsibilities for their stronghold and became an adept hunter during these times of war. As the years passed, he watched as family members and clanmates diminished. All he could do was hunt and practice archery, preparing for the day when he was allowed to fight. One day, his father did not return from a raid. He waited at the stronghold gates day and night, but to no avail. He wanted nothing more than revenge on the Thalmor, but the chief refused. The war was over, and it became clear there was no way the Thalmor would relinquish their grip on Valenwood. The country was officially absorbed into the Aldmeri Dominion. The young Wood Orc was furious and determined to continue the fight against the chief's orders. To conceal his identity in the villages of the forest, he fashioned himself a wooden mask and wore it any time he left the stronghold. He raided Thalmor caravans and put his archery skills to use, taking out several high-ranking officials. One of the Bosmer rebels introduced him to a venom harvester, and he began to purchase extremely potent spider venom to use in his quest. His venom-tipped arrows proved incredibly effective, and he put such fear into the Thalmor that they began to abandon their patrols. His success was short-lived, however, as the Dominion put an extremely high bounty on the anonymous masked archer's head. Thalmor wizards were sent to scour the villages, and they even went so far as to burn down sections of the forest to find him. He returned to the stronghold one night to be confronted by the chief. The old orc was furious, clutching a bounty letter displaying an image of his wooden mask. Even though the orcs of the forest have different fighting techniques, they are still orcs through and through. They live by a code, and when the code is broken, there must be a price. The Wood Orc knew this meant exile and abandonment from Malakath. He argued with the chief over the tribe's inaction, made sure the entire tribe knew he thought them cowards, and then departed into the wilds of the world. The Wood Orc wandered for over a decade, traversing Tamriel until being caught in the Jeral Mountains right in the middle of an imperial battle. The Wood Orc knew little of the politics of the world, in his travels of course he met politically minded people, but he himself preferred to reject the whims of leaders and remain a subject of the trees and wind. From the prison cart, he notes the Thalmor ambassador meeting with General Tullius, and considers it a sign that he was cursed by Malakath for abandoning the code, and this was justice catching up to him. He is ready to accept his fate at the hands of the headsman, but he is miraculously saved in a dragon attack. This was puzzling, his close shave with death leaves him feeling more grateful to be alive than ever before, but he wonders if there is some sort of game being played with his fate, a pawn being moved back and forth by forces greater than he is, a theme that's central to his personal journey. 
He has spent his life a violent agent of freedom and doesn't appreciate being manipulated by the gods. More on that in a minute. As he begins his adventures in Skyrim, the northern landscapes intrigue him. Dragons, forests, plains, open sky. This was a land wrought with the breath of the wild and a land that invoked immediate reverence. The rocky peaks, lush pines, and merciless ice flows pushed the wood orc to emotional heights. He remembered the words of his father many years ago in the still of the early morning, speaking of nature with reverence. Skyrim was the ultimate wild, and this wood orc knew immediately that he was meant to be here. The wilds were teeming with life and threats. Here he could forge himself anew as the ultimate hunter. For his player home, we have opted to build him the basic version of the Lakeview Manor, a small cabin with only the basic necessities. Even still, he rarely uses it other than to stash important items and grow ingredients in the garden. He lives and sleeps under the stars and pines and feels most at home in the wilds. There are a few things that set apart the Wood Orc from our other naturalistic archers like the Jade Huntress and the Ghost of Atmora. They are both quite peaceful and will not attack unless provoked. The Wood Orc, however, is naturally aggressive and goes on the offensive to take the battle to his foes. He will not hesitate to skewer a traveling Thalmor agent on the road from 500 yards away and feels no remorse in doing so. He ensures that every shot matters. He will combine many fortify archery effects, the orc racial ability, berserker rage, and the deadly shot perk to make for crazy deadly long shots. We roleplay that his orcish bow has a much heavier draw than most bows in the realm, and his orcish strength allows him to drop back where other archers would fail to do so. Since wood orcs value their geographic knowledge as much as their northern cousins value sheer strength, we did our best in this build to challenge ourselves to take the longest shot possible. We were constantly looking for new sniping positions and often scaled mountainsides to get the drop on enemies. You can use the Klimic Supplies exploit to roleplay the wood orcs scaling up the rocky cliffs to get a better vantage point. One notable moment was during the quest Blood on the Ice in Windhelm. We used Klimic Supplies to scale the wall next to the blacksmith shop and monitor the stone quarter at night. Catching the butcher with an arrow in the back was a fun little roleplay moment that added to the character's story. For questlines, his primary allied faction is the Companions. His freedom-loving spirit was a good match for them, as they are independent contractors, yet place a strong emphasis on honor. He makes a decision to become a werewolf for a few reasons. As mentioned previously, he doesn't like the idea of his fate being manipulated by the gods. Malakath has cursed him, but then the gods saved him from certain death. Fate dictated that he is the Dragonborn and he is now burdened with the responsibility to save the world from Alduin. This quest is unavoidable. He didn't have the chance to object, but knows it is his duty. He is willing to fight for justice and freedom, but the lack of control over his own fate was all too much for him. Joining his spirit with the Beast World seemed the only exit. Though he is now completely pledged to Hircine, at least he made the choice, rather than have the choice be forced on him. Even though he's a werewolf, he didn't choose to focus on werewolf combat. He prefers to be himself in combat and uses his superior knowledge of geography around him to best his foes, not just sharp teeth and claws. He does however use beast form to quickly traverse the landscape, as werewolf form is far faster than even the swiftest horse. It didn't take long for him to fit in with the local Nords. He sees eye to eye with much of their culture and values the same things. For our playthrough, we chose to join the Stormcloaks to stick it to the Thalmor openly. In his eyes, this is a fight against the influence of the Dominion, and the personal nature of the battle makes it hard to see the possible long-term effects this war will have on the Empire. His hatred of the Thalmor blinds his judgment. There are many side quests he can complete in his travels, including stopping into all the Orc strongholds. All of them are important to visit, but his encounter at Largishbur becomes a turning point for him. After saving the tribe from their curse, he gains the approval of Malakath and is even granted his relic, Volendrung. He feels the burden of his own exile lifted and once more in control of his own fate. Though Volendrung sits unused in his cabin, he considers it his most prized possession. Now let's discuss building the character. We chose the Wood Orc's armor combination to solidify the look of a wild and rugged woodsman. He will wear the Stormcloak Officer's armor, obtainable outside of Forlhost if you sided with Rayloff when fleeing Helgen. For gloves, we chose standard fur gauntlets. However, it's a very good idea to check vendors for ones with Fortify Archery enchantments. Hide or leather variants could also look the part for this slot. For his boots, we chose the unique set of hide boots, Predator's Grace. 
Use Whirlwind Sprint off the right side of Hag's End Overlook to reach them. They're sitting right next to a chest on this difficult to reach alcove, and provide a negligible 1% increase to stamina regeneration, along with the much more useful Muffle effect. With these boots, the Wood Orc can become one with the forest and move completely silently. He will wear the Dragon Priest Mask Croesus, granting him plus 20% to archery, alchemy, and lockpicking. We rarely use Dragon Priest Masks in our build, as they tend to take away from unique character aesthetics, but we thought the brown and green tribal looking design matched the Wood Orc perfectly, along with it fitting his backstory as a masked Avenger. For auxiliary gear, he will wear Kind's Token, obtainable after the quest Kind's Sacred Trials, and he will also wear a Ring of Fortify Archery. For weapons, the Wood Orc carries a self-crafted Mighty Orcish Bow. It looks like a heavy drawweight bow and fits the Wood Orc's aesthetic perfectly. Given that his gear gives him such a strong buff to archery, he will also exclusively use self-crafted Orcish arrows that we roleplay he crafts to be especially sharp and dangerous. He will also carry with him an Iron War Axe, roleplayed as more of a woodsman's hatchet. We are fully aware that it is the weakest variant of War Axe in the game, but it looks absolutely perfect strapped to his belt. And as you all know, looks are very important to us. He can smith it up to make it more usable, and combine with a few perks in one-handed, and you have a serviceable weapon to fight off wolves and low-level bandits, which helps conserve your orcish arrows for more worthy targets. Moving on to spells and shouts. The Wood Orc is not a mage and knows no spells. He instead relies on nature's bounty to craft himself potions and poisons to augment his abilities. However, he will make use of a variety of shouts, many more than we usually include in our builds. He will use Become Ethereal, Whirlwind Sprint, Aura Whisper, Marked for Death, Animal Allegiance, Kind's Peace, and the first two words of Slow Time. The final word requires completing the College of Winterhold questline, which just doesn't fit his roleplay at all. Fortunately, two words gets you most of the way there and is still a fun shout to use. As an avid alchemist, the Wood Orc has a few specialty concoctions that he makes frequent use of that are essential for his basic gameplay. His first concoction is called Huntsman's Draft, made with Canis Root, Namira's Rot, and Juniper Berries. This is a potion to fortify marksmen and regenerate health. Since we want to stack as many damage multipliers as we can, this one will be used most in general gameplay. His next one is called Venom of the Widow, and is made from Deathbell, Giant Lycan, and Skeever Tail. This is a triple effect poison that applies Ravage Health, Damage Health, and Weakness to Poison. Applying this one first to tougher enemies makes them much easier to finish off. The Wood Orc learned how to imitate this Venom back in Valenwood during his encounters with a spider-loving Bosmere, and it's become a staple in his arsenal ever since. His final unique brew is called Wild Blood, and is made by combining Vampire Dust and Luna Moth Wing. This potion of invisibility also regenerates health, and we roleplay this potion as not simply turning invisible, but becoming one with the wilds around you, taking their essence into the Wood Orc and healing him. Moving on to stats and perk spread, we leveled the Wood Orc with a ratio of 1 health to 1 stamina. He doesn't use any magic. For the Standing Stone, we chose the Steed Stone. Even though he wears exclusively light armor, the negation to armor weight when sneaking is super helpful, and the extra 100 carry weight is always nice. We aren't perking light armor for at least the early portion of the game, so you could always switch to another Standing Stone if you decide to get unhindered from the perk tree. Finally, we are playing as an orc, for obvious reasons, once again stemming from the fact that Berserker Rage Stealth Archery is just insane. By the time you reach level 40, you'll want the following perks. In Archery, we will be taking every single perk, even ones with a negligible benefit. Since he is a master archer, we want to squeeze out every bit of utility here that we can. In Alchemy, take all five in Alchemist, Physician, Benefactor, Poisoner, and Concentrated Poison. In Sneak, take all five in Stealth, Backstab, and Deadly Aim. The left side isn't as useful for this character as we have Muffle already on our boots, and he doesn't need to duck in and out of the shadows quickly. He should be getting kills from across the game's rendering distance. Next up is Smithing, where you'll take Steel, Dwarven, and Orcish Smithing. This is simply so you can smith and upgrade your Orcish bow and craft Orcish arrows. Finally, we will be placing just four perks in one-handed. One in Armsman, and all three in Hack and Slash perks for bleeding damage for up-close enemies. If you plan to play past level 40, crafting a Dragonbone bow would be a great goal to grind towards. 
You could also perk the light armor tree to help with survivability, and you can branch further into one-handed if you find yourself fighting more often in up-close skirmishes. Alright, moving on to our favorite part of every build, the special moves. In this section, we like to combine aspects of Skyrim's gameplay into unique moves that serve as the basis of gameplay for each character, in an attempt to create unique gameplay that makes each build a fun new experience. The Wood Orc's first special move is called Longshot. This is the Wood Orc's signature move, and the one that allows him to shoot incredibly powerful shots. First, use the Orc racial ability Berserker Rage to double your damage, then drink Huntsman's Draft to further increase archery with Croesus's extra 20%, archery perks, and deadly aim multiplying all this by 3, you have a ridiculously powerful arrow. His next special move is called Huntsman's Repose. When overwhelmed, shout Become Ethereal to allow you time to drink Huntsman's Draft, and line up the perfect shot. When you become corporeal again, the tide of battle is turned in your favor. The Wood Orc was taught this move by another archer who made the wilds of the world his home. Up next is Acrobatics. The Wood Orcs are described as having the agility of Bosmer, leaping from tree to tree in combat. To simulate this, we use the Slow Time Shout, and then further slow down enemies with a Poison of Slow. These poisons always have an ailment value of 50% slower movement speed, so they are useful even when your alchemy skill is low. His next special move is called Rusted Blade, and is a move to use when you're forced to battle in close combat. First, Shout Marked for Death to weaken your enemy. Then strike them with your Iron War Axe with bleeding damage from Hack and Slash. They'll bleed out in moments. We roleplay that this hatchet kill is brutal, inefficient, but still deadly. Again, we only use one-handed when in close quarters and stealth archery isn't an option. His final special move is called Spirit of the Wild and is performed situationally. First, shout Animal Allegiance when around spiders, bears, or other beasts. Then drink your specialty potion Wild Blood. While you regenerate health, your new animal allies keep your opponents busy while your essence bleeds into the landscape around you. This gives you plenty of time to reposition and line up the perfect shot. And with that, we are ready to finish off this build video. The Wood Orc provided us with a fun reason to revisit the classic Stealth Archer, taking ridiculously powerful shots from the shadows. We had an absolute blast making this video and can't believe that Season 5 is almost drawing to a close. Next week will be the season finale and we can't wait for you all to see it. Thanks so much for sticking around till the end of the video, and if you like what we do, please like and subscribe to help us keep the magic of Skyrim alive. We'll see you next time, right here on Skypothesis.